Watching what has unfolded the last couple of days in Israel with surprise attacks, kidnappings and killings has been very hard to digest and hard to understand, especially a history so deep and rich in that part of the world. Today we are joined by Dr. Susan Schiavosi. She is a professor of international affairs at Trinity University who was kind enough to share some time with us here this evening for our Q&A. Give us some historical perspective on this. Doctor, thanks for being here, first of all. I want to talk about who the major players are in this conflict. We have Israel, we have Hamas. Can you explain what is Hamas? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, Hamas uh, is a, a uh, it started as a resistance movement and it was an offshoot of Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, of Egypt. Uh, it uh, declared existence in, uh, I think it was 1987, uh, and then uh, took control over Gaza after the uh, election 2009, I think. And uh, so at the moment, it is basically a governing body in uh, Gaza, and it has two uh, wing, if you like. Uh, one is it provides all the social services and uh, schools, health, etc. And then it has a military wing. It, it, it functions more or less like a governing body of, uh, of Gaza. Uh, Gaza uh, was um, uh, more or less like um, West Bank, uh, and uh, but th there were settlements there, but Israel decided to take all the settlement out. Uh, and Gaza, however, was never um, a, an independent uh, entity because it was blockaded by both Israel from the north and uh, Egypt from the south. So according to some uh, human rights group and uh, some uh, Palestinian, uh, it's 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 an open door or open air prison in some ways because they are at the mercy of Israel and uh, Egypt. This area, uh, has, as, sorry, Professor. This this area has a very long history of conflict, of violence there. What do we know about what sparked what happened this weekend? What what was the tipping point that led to this today, what, and what uh, is different well, about uh, this one? Mm -hmm. Why why it happened now? I would say there are two reasons. One is short term reason, and that uh, has to do with. Uh, 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 with, with the election of uh, of a hardline Israeli uh, uh, government uh, uh, that added uh, uh, to the settlement, for example, according to the High Commission uh, Commissioner of Human Rights in um, uh, United Nations Human Rights, uh, the the number of settlers in West Bank, not in Gaza, because we don't have. Uh, um, settlers in Gaza, but but in West Bank and uh, Jerusalem, it uh, amounted to seven hundred thousand uh, illegal uh, settlers, uh, and that was a, an increase of 34 percent uh, since uh, twenty twenty one. So you can see that that there was this increase, and that created tremendous amount of anger among the Palestinian and the. Um, the government or the Palestinian Authority in West Bank uh, was uh, uh, less inclined to address this, and uh, and so oh, Hamas found this moment uh, as uh, as anger of of Palestinian increased uh, to uh, attack Israel. But uh, of course, uh, this required months of planning. It's not something that happened all of a sudden, which take us to another interesting point that has been raised by both Israelis and um, the world in some ways, That and that was the failure of Israeli intelligence to know this, because Israel always uh, predicted or knew of a very good intelligence service within Gaza and in the West Bank and other areas uh, of Middle East, including Iran. But in this particular uh, 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 incidents. Uh, this was an unprecedented in terms of a, its scale of attack, uh, 
mm-hmm. and a surprising attack on Israel with high casualty. Can you talk a little bit about sort of the the functionality between Gaza and Israel? You talked about the mm. the blockade that exists there. And I, I, I believe a stat that a lot of people are seeing in the reporting about this is sort of the high concentration of people in Gaza, 140 right. some square miles, home to two million people Point. in two such a small three. space. Yeah. Many of them right. travel back and forth, though, correct, to Israel are, to work. I, I think there are about 17,000 who have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, work permit. They go daily and they come back. Uh, after work. Uh, But uh, to tell you, uh, to give you a sense about uh, the lack of autonomy is that, for example, after this attack, which was, as I said, it was unprecedented in its scale, uh, Israel um, cut off water, uh, electricity, and uh, to the whole Gaza. So that 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 tells you something about how much control Gaza Gaza has uh, on its destiny, so to speak. So, um, yes, there there have been uh, people in Gaza who have had um, work permit. Uh, they go daily. They used to. I I'm, I suppose now it's uh, the borders are closed, uh, but the rest of the population are basically. Uh, no or uh, permit permit to go anywhere mm-hmm. and and that is also true of of uh, Egyptian they don't allow um, uh, Gazan to go anywhere Dr. Susan Siavoshi, I know there's so much more for us to dive in on this subject in this history but I appreciate you spending some time with us giving us that context of course thank you for having me thanks thank for you. being here Keep up to date with all of San Antonio's top news, weather, and so much more by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And once again, thanks for watching KSAT.